The Cardinals' Tyler O'Neill situation is kind of fascinating. A manager calling out and benching a player for not running hard. The culture is shaking. Let's take a pragmatic look at Hustle in a little digging in. For those who don't know, Pete Rose was nicknamed Charlie Hustle. He ran hard all the time. He became an American icon because of it. He was an excellent player, but more than that, he was incredibly competitive. He wanted everyone to see he wanted it more than you did. He also led to a lot of winning. But the nickname Charlie Hustle came from the Yankees in a spring training game with the Reds. They saw Rose racing down the line, and they said something to the effect of, get a load of Charlie Hustle. They were making fun of him. To them, it looked like fake effort just for show. But that's the effect of people who work insanely hard. They kind of make their coworkers look bad. I'll give you a more recent example. This is Jake McCarthy of the Diamondbacks. He's been bunting for game-winning hits, stealing bases, moving runners over, making incredible catches in the outfield. And we're one week in. Jake McCarthy is kind of making people look bad. He seems to want it a little more than his opponents. I refer you to, as well, to the current run of the Cleveland Guardians. They faced off in a big series with the White Sox late last year, and in the opener of a three-game series, Cleveland basically ran the White Sox into the ground. They swept that series, won the division, left the White Sox for dead. Now, they have to play that way to make up for the talent gap, right? But they did it, and they're still doing it this year. Baseball is a fight base by base, out for out. Team effort, with actual talent and speed, of course, can have a meaningful, tangible effect. So, what am I saying? I'm sympathetic to Oliver Marmol wanting his Cardinals to play like Cleveland or a club filled with Jake McCarthy and Pete Rose. But you do have to do a little cost-benefit analysis here. Back about 10 years ago, you might remember this, Robinson Cano was a controversial figure. I mean, Robbie Cano did not run hard. He especially did not run hard running down the first baseline. However, Robbie Cano was also the best hitting second baseman in baseball, and he played. He was playing 159 games a year. I mean, literally, he averaged 159 games a year for 10 years. Think about the gain and what it is for actually running hard down the line on a routine ground ball. A major league game features, on average, about one error a game between the two teams. Forcing an error is unlikely. And even if you do, what do you pick up? One base? Is getting, I don't know, one or two extra bases a year worth a potential leg injury? Baseball's played every day. Injuries happen. With a guy busting it down to first, that happens. Not every time, but it happens. So one, two. I'll give you four bases a year. Is it worth even one 10-day stint on the injured list? I don't think it is. But you allow players to not bust it to first, like Robbie Cano, for a reason. To save it for when it really matters. When does it really matter? High leverage scoring position. Tyler O'Neill was on second base in the seventh inning. His team was down by three. That actually matters quite a bit. Now, as I pointed out, he wasn't exactly lollygagging out there. He was running fairly hard, but then he kicked it into high gear when he was sent home by his third base coach. Then he was thrown out. That's a bad look. But how fast or slow was he going? Well, StatCast, powered by Google Cloud, actually StatCast is pretty good at measuring these things. O'Neill is one of the fastest guys in baseball. He was 15th. 15, that's way up there in sprint speed last year in the major leagues. That's the 97th percentile. I know there's a ton of things on this list, so I'm going to leave it up there. You can read it all. His fastest time last year, this is Tyler O'Neill, 31 feet per second. His average sprint time last year, 29.8 feet per second. On that run on Tuesday, he was running at 28 feet per second. That's above league average, but that's a good bit slower than his own average Last year, last season, he went from second to home on average at 6.94 seconds. For that run in that game for which he was benched, he took 7.31 seconds. That's a big difference. There are a lot of variables running from second to home. I know that. But in that case, there were two outs. There was no one on third in front of him. There was nothing to slow him down but himself. His average, again, 6.94. He ran it 7.31. Think of it like a sprint. It's a big difference. Oliver Marmol's inner computer and his timer was correct. O'Neill, for O'Neill, was going kind of slow. Yet I'm kind of torn on this. Perhaps it would have been better to handle this quietly. O'Neill is not known for a guy that lollygags. He's in great shape. He's fast. And he had a great season two years ago, and he was injured for a good part of last year. He's rightly trying to be in this season for the long haul. Maybe a little post-game tape review in the manager's office would have gotten the message across. However, I will say this. For those of us not in our 20s, this is not a stunning rebuke. Athletes at all levels used to get called out quite a bit. 
Oliver Marmol didn't scream at O'Neill. He didn't humiliate him. All he said was, in essence, we have standards, put it up here. He didn't meet them. Maybe that's a message he wanted the entire team to hear, not just O'Neill. The Cardinals are a World Series contender, but they're not the favorites. The Dodgers, the Padres, the Mets look more powerful with better pitching. It's possible for the Cards to beat those clubs, maybe only if they play a little more like a team that wants it a little more. O'Neill doesn't deserve a lot of heat for this. He's already been benched for one game, but I'm not down on Oliver Marmol. It's his job to have his team getting after it. Every base counts, every game counts. Desire and drive get you extra bases and extra wins.